B-boy, I want to ask you something. Mom's voice splintered the silence. She sat across from me at the dining table, her eyes cast downward over high cheekbones. Mom could always make me feel like I was 10, even though I was 20 at the time. There's a boy in every Filipino family. Jim boy, Joe boy, just plain old boy. Boy is an artifact imported by American soldiers. I'm named B-Boy after dad, not my non-existent breakdancing skills. Before I realized my father's name wasn't dad and that I was his namesake, I thought B-Boy was a command, an order, as in be good, behave, B-Boy. As a kid, I mistook my name for my parents' ambivalence over having a sissy for a son. I thought they were disappointed because I wasn't a real boy. Real boys like girls, and I like boys. Without being told, I knew there was something wrong with liking boys and that I was the wrong kind of boy. As a kid, I'd hear mom talk about the boys doing poorly in school, or dad brag about how well the boys played baseball. The boys never meant me. It meant my two younger brothers, When my parents called my name, I inwardly flinched, hearing an indictment of my own gender trouble. Pops, bit by the Ali versus Frazier Thrilla and Manila bug, bought boxing gloves for me and the boys. They boxed the crap out of me. They floated like butterflies and stung like bees, mimicking the martial grace of Ali as they advanced upon me. I, flat-footed, flailed about, led with my wrists and elbows before retreating, the exact image of sissies lampooned in cartoons. Think Snagglepuss exiting stage right. Pops boxed me to teach me self-defense, but mostly I suspect to punch me into proper masculinity. He beat me regularly. He beat me when I showed him my fourth grade report card. I got a U, unsatisfactory in citizenship. Talking too much. Pops slapped the shit out of me. I was shocked. Who cares about citizenship grades? Pops sneered. Why do you talk like a girl? Somehow I've found the nerve to answer, talking doesn't make me a girl. What? I'd crossed a line. I talked back. Dad slugged me, doubling me over. I rolled into a ball, covering my face and neck. He beat me through every room of our house. He kicked and shoved me from the living room through the hallway, past the bathroom, to the kitchen, up the dining room and back. We made the entire circuit. I was a soccer ball. This was one of the many incidents that eventually froze me into the closet. I feared dad would beat the life out of me if I did anything else that veered from acceptable manhood. And mom, if her reaction to dad's soccer drill was any indication, I'd assume, I assumed she'd rebuke with the same, silent, li- with the same tight-lipped silence, a silence I took as her approval of dad's rage. As a teen, I tried to date women, hoping to find that mythical right girl, but that always failed. (laughs) Years later, when I broke up from my last attempt, mom summoned me into her kitchen, her room for serious discussions. As I followed her, mom's gait reminded me of the Moro princess of Sinkil, the traditional Filipino dance. In Sinkil, crisscrossed pairs of bamboo poles represent falling trees and branches buffeted by a typhoon. Followed by her faithful umbrella girl, the princess's bare feet step in, around, and between sharp clapping of poles. Below the graceful frozen posture of their torsos, the princess and her attendant's legs twist and twirl to avoid getting caught. Uh, can I ask you something, b-boy? She repeated her first, she repeated from her seat at the table. Sure, if you want to hear the truth, more to myself than to her. Perhaps mom was ready for this conversation, but I hadn't rehearsed for this performance. What? If you're ready to hear what I have to say. I barely heard my voice over my pounding heart. Her eyes remained thin. I saw a glimmer of tears. So, you are gay. I nodded in affirmation. I didn't even get to come out as much as follow her lead, one step behind. Tears rolled from her eyes, but she refused to dab her face. Is, is, it, is it something we did? Something daddy or I did? Self-recrimination in her voice. Taking my cue, I tried to reassure her, reassure her that it was just me, just who I am. Just you? Not us? Not our fault? She perked up. Oh, I knew it. Her voice brightened. 
This change in direction disoriented me. What did she know? That being gay is okay? Hope flickered in my gut. Maybe I was wrong for not coming out to mom earlier. After all, she supported my less than macho activities. She sewed my costumes for the high school drama productions. She ran lines with me for Oklahoma, Ado Annie to my Will Parker. Oh, what a beautiful, I'm not even gonna try that. I've got a beautiful feeling, everything's going my way. I knew it, she wept. She really feels for me. Exhilaration swelled in my chest. Now, now I understand why, why you are such a bitch. <laughs> Bamboo poles clapped together, catching the umbrella girl's foot. Mom's vo voice rose as she's lit into me for years of adolescent disrespect I had flung at her. Looking back, I see her accusations were justified. When dad slugged me, I took it out on her. I would answer her back with all the venom I wish I could hurl at pops, and my verbal sparring with mom cued dad to rain punches on me. That was our routine. Part of me blamed her for not defending, part of me blamed her for not defending me from dad, and mom was a safe target, my way to get back at pops, and I selfishly ignored all the times he bullied her. For mom, my being gay was a non-issue compared to how my cruelty stung her. I could hear dad pacing in the living room. I froze, terrified he'd burst in the kitchen and kicked me around the house for upsetting her. But mom wasn't done. She slammed the bamboo poles around both our ankles. You are just as bad as your father, loud enough for dad to hear. She bolted to the bedroom. Dad followed her, slamming the door. From the kitchen, I could hear mom caterwauling, a cross between a nun chanting rosary and a warbling Chinese opera diva. Mom, dad's rumbling punctuated mom's aria, basso profundo contrasting mezzo soprano. I couldn't make out the exact words, but the tone wasn't comforting. Is dad consoling mom? Is she trying to calm him down? Or were they egging each other on, preparing to burst into the living room to throw me out? Would dad charge out the room to wail on me? Paralyzed, I waited for the next crack, snap of bamboo. The storm eventually calmed. I felt safe enough to bed down on the living room floor. The middle of the sala was jammed with luggage. The boys were home for the weekend, and sleeping on the floor wasn't out of the ordinary. In my sleep, I tossed and turned into the hallway. My head and shoulders fully blocked the exit to the living room. When my parents woke, I felt the footfalls approach and retreat from where I lay. Mom's clicking heels, followed by dad's steps, cushioned by tennis shoes. As they prepared to go out and run errands, I waited for Pops to crush my head under his New Balance cross trainers. On his final pass, Dad slowed as he stepped over my body. I held my breath, trying to stop my body quakes. I heard, or more precisely, felt him bend over me. I waited for a backhand or a headbutt. I wanted to disappear. He grunted, not an angry grunt, just the exhalation of a 65-year-old making when he leans over. He grabbed the blanket that had slid down to my waist, lifted it over my bare shoulders, and rested a hand on my head, as close to tossing my hair as he'd ever done, and he stepped over me to the door. I was still scared shitless, but I took his gesture as an attempt at tenderness, a positive sign. Pop hadn't touched me for years. The last time I was in high school and I had spoken disrespectfully to mom. After that final altercation, I escaped into books and student activities. I was rarely home long enough to interact with either mom or pops, except when mom rehearsed dance steps for musicals or other high school musicals. After mom outed me, the only things pops had ever said direct to me was my se about my sexuality happened years later. Be careful about the deadly disease. AIDS was just becoming part of the common discourse. Mom nudged me with her pumps practically kicking me out of her way. Inches from my head, she stamped her feet, snapping at my father in their dialect to hurry up. I heard her pivot on her heels, gliding toward the door. Dad, two steps behind her. Hey, 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 hey.